Flax is a game that I've wanted to cover for a while now. And considering that this is a puzzle game, the most copy-pasted and clone-intensive genre of all time, the fact that I actually want to subject myself to this game should give you an idea of how truly unique it really is. Well, I mean, sure it still has random colored geometric shapes falling from the sky and filling up the limited group in the game, but it's not like I'm asking for miracles here. But hey, here's something new. Clax is actually not native to the NES. Or anything, really. I mean, sure it was an arcade game originally, but it was a type of arcade game that was almost instantly ported to everything under the sun. Everything includes, but isn't limited to, the NES, the TurboGrafx-16, the Game Gear, the Commodore 64, the Sega Genesis, the Amiga, the Atari Lynx, the Atari 7800, and even the OG father of gaming as a whole, the Atari 2600 in 1991. Who needed that port? I will never know. Suffice it to say, Clax is the sort of game that a lot of people have heard about, but frankly it's such an oddity to begin with that I really felt like it deserved its own review. Plus, now I finally have the opportunity to put this in one of my videos! So Clax, like I said before, is a puzzle game. In the traditional sense, maybe, but it really does play around with the basic cookie cutter Tetris formula more than enough to make it its own thing in my opinion. For one thing, Clax is on a very rough three-dimensional plane, and all the tiles you have to use are slowly revealed on this conveyor belt thing long before you have to do anything with them. Which, like any good puzzle game, gets progressively harder and harder to keep up with as time goes on. And on top of that, it's not just a matter of waiting for the blocks to slowly fall wherever you want them to. You actually have to catch them in this holder of sorts before dropping them, otherwise it becomes unusable and is added to your drop meter, in which if you completely fill up, ends the game. On top of that, this game abides to what I like to call the rule of five, in which you're given a 5x5 grid to place tiles, a limit of five tiles you can keep on your placeholder, and, depending on what difficulty you're playing on, a drop meter fills up after you fail to place five tiles. In my opinion, this is a pretty significant way of making the whole game feel much more well-rounded. It keeps the rules very simple to follow, and doesn't make you focus on all the tiny little details and what makes the game what it is, so you can actually spend a lot more time focusing on actually not dying. So, by making the game as simple as possible, the game designer succeeded in making something that is 100% fully playable, and yet unique at the same time. But that's the thing, though. Everything in Clax is certainly functional, but in order to truly be a game for the ages, you also have to worry about whether your presentation will fully sell it or not. And Clax's presentation is definitely... interesting, to say the least. The NES port of Clax has become somewhat infamous on the internet for its intro, as well as just how upfront and self-aware the game seems to be and how easily it dated itself. What do I mean by this? Well, how about we take a look at the very first thing that pops up when you turn your NES on. The quote, it is the 90s and there is time for Clax. And on top of that, it plays what I like to consider to be the most amazingly fitting, and yet at the same time somehow unfitting music for any NES game in the history of everything. amazes me as to how many conflicting feelings I've gotten for this game literally not even 10 seconds in. And the rest of the soundtrack? Pretty much exactly like it. While most of the other songs in the game are a bit more repetitious, they still hold largely the same vibes as that terribly amazing intro song. They even utilized voice freaking synthesis in most of their songs in a Tengen game on the NES. Definitely nothing else like it, that's for sure! However, none of what you've seen thus far holds any kind of candle to Clax's most ingenious feature ever to be put in any game in history. I'm of course withholding the glorious, the innovative, the borderline inconceivable acknowledgement of what is no doubt nothing short of the apex of humanity itself, the game mode, eloquently entitled as... Stuff. Featuring a breakout clone with a physics engine that's so jacked up that it's better off as a drinking game than something that you actually voluntarily play. And this! Like I said, the apex of humanity. 
So to wrap things up here, I have to say that Clax is probably one of the most surprisingly entertaining games I've played in quite a while. As in, other than Clax being an unlicensed game and therefore likes to softlock every 35 minutes, it's a game that I'm fairly confident in saying has no real flaws. Of course, this is still a puzzle game, and if you're not a fan of the genre to begin with, this isn't magical enough to change your mind on everything, but all joking aside, it is really something that I had a lot of fun with. And even if Clax isn't your thing, I think it should be at least appreciated as, all together now, an early 90s puzzle game that had all the key aspects of game design intact, without blatantly copying the Tetris formula. And if for no other reason than that one alone, Clax gets my solid recommendation.